Hello, my name's Simon. This is for Bike Social, and this is the launch of Moto Guzzi's V85 TT here in Sardinia. Right, TT doesn't stand for Tourist Trophy, it stands for Tutte Turano, I think I've said that right, which I guess means all terrain. Now, this is a crowded marketplace of adventure bikes. We're talking about all kinds of uh, machines that have some great virtues and a few vices. So for example, there's Africa Twins and Tiger 800s with 21 inch front wheels, or you can go down to Multistrada 950s with a 19 inch front wheel. They're all of a breed. Moto Guzzi say the V85 is a classic enduro and so it fits into this market with its classic styling which I guess puts it alongside bikes like Triumph Scrambler 1200, maybe the Street Scrambler, uh, maybe BMW's Urban GS, maybe even things like Ducati's Desert Sled. So what have we got? Let's quickly whiz through the spec because we're about to go for a ride. Classic Moto Guzzi style, we have a 853cc transverse 90 degree air cooled two valve push rod v twin uh, this basically is a modified quite a heavily modified version uh, of the v9 range engine so what we've got 80 horsepower doesn't sound like a huge amount but when you think a lot of its competition are making 94 it might not count for that much on the road 60 foot pound of torque so what are the revisions to this engine? We've got new titanium intake valves, we've got new cam profiles, we've got aluminium push rods, we've got uh, modifications to the clutch, to the drivetrain, so there's less, drive less drivetrain lash. We've got modifications to the crank. It's quite a lot of work. Frame-wise, it's, uh, it's a new frame for Guzzi. It doesn't fit any other model, but it is their traditional steel tube trellis frame. Uh, with different steering geometry. So obviously I think we have a slightly longer wheelbase, you have a longer swing arm, uh, and uh, the rake and trail is adapted to, to suit, I guess what you call um, touring, adventure riding, mostly road type stuff. There is some off-road capability, but it's not heavily emphasized. In keeping with the V85 TT's all-round ethos, Moto Guzzi say that they've designed the ergonomics to suit 5% to 95% of the population. Now, I'm not sure what that means in practice, but at 830 mil, the seat height is not dauntingly high. And if you want, you can go down a size or you can go up a size a few mil. And then let's just have a quick look at the clocks before we go for a ride. So this is a new TFT design, very pretty, lots of lights. Uh, we have different modes. So we have a rain mode and a road mode and we have an off-road mode, all of which are full power but vary the amount of traction control and have different ABS settings. Uh, we also have cruise control as standard, yay! All that remains for now then is to take the V85 TT out for a ride and see what it's like.
So we're midway on the uh, launch of Moto Guzzi's V85 TT and we've covered quite a ride actually. It's probably been about, I'm guessing 80 miles, maybe 90 miles. We've done a little bit of off-road. We've been around some mountain roads and some coastal roads. It's all been very lovely, fairly sedate pace. But we've discovered a few things about the bike that you can't tell just by looking at it. Um, although I suppose you could guess it hasn't got a great deal of ground clearance. You can see there, the pegs go down fairly easily. There are no hero blobs, so it skates along on these on the underside of the foot peg. Um, and it's quite good fun, but it is a limiting factor when you're going around corners with some reasonable verve. What else have we discovered? We love the riding position. It's a classic, fairly manageable adventure bike. These bars are really wide and they brace you in almost a, it's almost a naked bike riding position with the foot pegs set back a little bit, the body's canted forward slightly. So it's actually really, really comfortable. This bikini fairing keeps a fair bit of wind off your chest. It doesn't give you any buffeting because it's too low for that. So it is really just, uh, just to keep the wind off your chest and, and give you a chance. But your shoulders get a lot of buffeting and you still feel fairly exposed. What else have we got? Suspension wise, got to tell you about the suspension. So these Kyaba units, they're 41 millimeter forks and it's a single Kyaba rear shock. Now it's got progressive springs and the fork springs are progressive as well. We've got adjustable preload and adjustable rebound damping at the back and we have adjustable rebound and adjustable preload at the front. And these are some um, among the better quality standard shocks. The ride quality from this thing is really, really good. It's a little bit on the soft side. Um, I see the preload at the back is set on minimum. I might jack that up a, later on just to give the bike a bit more front end bias because the steering is fairly lazy. There's no weight to it, but when you're tracking through a corner, if it's going to do anything, it will lift up, especially when it, when, when it grounds out, it will lift up rather than keep tracking around the corner. So it's natural inclination is to want to stand up just a fraction, but it's not, it's not a steering characteristic at all. It's really neutral mid corner. But anyway, the ride quality of this uh, suspension is really, really good. Now, one of the options you can get, I think it's with the sports pack as it upgrades the rear shock to an Olin's. I'm not entirely sure at this stage why you'd actually want to do that because this is a really, really good setup. Um, what else can we tell you about? The clocks are actually, for all the TFT blarney, they are fairly, fairly basic. Um, you get all the information you need. They're very pretty. It's quite a small dash. I think the only problem is if you sort of get tired of the blue, you can't really change the color or do an awful lot with it. Um, this bike has got a uh, Guzzi's Bluetooth integration with your smartphone. So if you want to, you can set it up to have turn by turn navigation on the screen. Uh, and it can, I think, tell you if you're getting a phone call. I'm not sure if it'll answer it for you. I suspect not. Uh, what else have we got? Handy little USB port. Um, switch gear wise and mode wise, I found it really, really intuitive to go in and, well, set the language to English for a start rather than Italian uh, and change the setup to miles per gallon and, and have it on miles, in, miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour. And if you can do that without anybody showing you how to do it, then that suggests that it is actually fairly straightforward. Um, the switch gear itself is pretty simple. Uh, changing the mode is slightly unusual because you have to press the starter button twice while the engine is running, which is a fairly unnatural thing to do, but uh, I'm sure Guzzi have done that before with some other bikes. Um, and apart from that, what else have we got? C is comfortable. Now, this being the dual colour version of the bike, you don't just get the dual colour on the tank and the side panels, and you also get the red frame. You also get the dual colour on the mudguard, and you get it on these little spoilers down on the forks here. You also get a kind of, well, it's not Alcantara, but it's a suede style seat, whereas on the standard bike, it's a slightly more plasticky feel. Um, they're both the same height, even though for some reason, the standard bike seat feels like it's higher, but apparently it's not. Um, so yeah, really manageable, really agile, good looking thing. In terms of uh, power and actual performance, it's 80 horsepower. It's not gonna set the world alight. It's got a fairly limited rev range. I mean, you can see there, 3000 RPM. There's not an awful lot going. You need to be getting it up above four, five, 
which is around about 60, 70 miles an hour, I think, in top gear for it to really start to pull. It will chuff along at about the ton. I think I've seen 100 miles an hour today, don't tell anyone. Um, but it's a pleasant engine. It's nice to use. Like I said, it's not the most exciting, thrilling thing in the world, but, but then what do you expect? It's, it's just pleasant. It doesn't feel breathless. It never feels short of power, uh, unless you're in top gear and you absolutely nail it from nothing. Uh, it's really civilized. It'll trickle down to 30 miles an hour in top gear without too much of a problem. The throttle response is really good. Uh, there's no snatchiness to it at all. So uh, brakes are really good. Brakes are actually quite sharp, but, but again, they're really manageable. You can really modulate your braking. So I am really impressed. I mean, on these launches, you kind of ride along thinking, do I want to own this bike? Would this be something that I'd be proud to park in my garage? Would this be something that I'd want to nip down the shops? Or is this something that I'd want to take to Scotland or to Wales or uh, to France or even to Sardinia for some reason? And oh, the only concern I had was that I'd be worried about running out of performance. And that's really not an issue, I think. I think this is a really solid, sweet motorcycle. Um, I'm trying to think of something really that I don't like about it. I can't really think of, of anything that I'd sort of sling out and say that's a disgrace. It's so far from the guzzies of old. I mean, I don't know if any of you remember going back to, I don't know, things like the, well, even back to the old Le Mans, um, or I remember a Moto Guzzi Targa, which were crude things. I mean, they had lovely looking engines, but the brakes didn't work and the clutch was horrible. It required two hands to pull it in. All that stuff's gone now. Guzzies work the way they should work dynamically. Uh, so now you're just left to enjoy the engine and just enjoy the sensation of that transverse V-twin. Um, highly recommended. Uh, uh, would I buy this instead of, say, something like a BMW Urban GS, which I guess is kind of, in my head, is maybe its closest natural rival? I think I'd take the Guzzi just because it has a little bit more of that long-range ability, I think, especially with this 23-litre tank. That'll keep going for quite a long time. So there we go. That's at the halfway point. Um... Let's see how we get on this afternoon. We've got a bit more riding to do, and I think this afternoon we're going to do a bit more off-road riding. We've done a tiny, tiny fraction today. Not really enough to make any kind of comparison with any other bike or determination of whether it's any good off-road. But there might be a little bit of fun later on this afternoon. We'll have to see. Until the top of the mountain, here it's all straight. You can okay. stay in front of me without problem. Cool, and it's a lot. Excellent. A lot. What a road! That's awesome! Thank you! So sweet! Can I, is it okay if I go in front? I'm, I'm rubbish off road on crap, but. You can't, you absolutely can stay in front. The road is absolutely easy when you take now, when we start the, the off road section, you have to go straight. Straight, straight, straight. straight. Okay, it's like uh, not more than two kilometers, one and a half kilometers. Is you're following me on this, yeah? Yeah, you'll be quicker than me because I can't ride off road, I'm terrible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I follow you, but sure I cannot keep your speed. <laughs> no. Okay, off road map? Yes.
Right, well we're back. That was around about, I don't know, 100, 120 miles today of coastal roads and mountain roads and a little bit of off-road even. Uh, and we've got some kind of verdict on the V85 TT. Now, I've got a sneaky feeling that if you like the look of this bike, then you'll already be kind of into the sort of riding that it offers because this is the polar opposite of something like a KTM 790 Adventure, which is all adventure. The Guzzi is pretty much as it looks. It's an 80 horsepower transverse V-twin engine. It's had a lot of work done to it, but at the end of the day, it's making 80 horsepower. So it's not the most powerful bike in the world, but what it is, is relaxed, laid back, comfortable, steady. And I know this sounds like I'm damning with faint praise, but it's just nice. It's charming. It's all those kind of really horrible words that maybe some motorcyclists aren't familiar with using because they want something that's exciting and raw and vibrant. Well, it's certainly vibrant, but it's a beautiful riding experience. Perhaps that's a better word. It's just effortlessly cruising along. Uh, you don't have to rev the motor. You just change gears at around about three, four, five thousand RPM. It's a laid back vibe. I mean, it will get a boogie on if you really want it to because it does handle. It's got the Kyaba suspension, the 41 millimeter forks with adjustable rebound and preload and uh, Kyaba rear shock. There's a 170 mil of wheel travel, which isn't excessive, but it's nice enough to give it a, a comfortable, long travel, gentle sort of ride. There's a little bit of weight transfer, but it's not dramatic. The brakes are really good. They're quite sharp, but it's easy to modulate them at the lever. The best thing about the, the long travel suspension on the Guzzi is that when you're changing direction, there's a lovely kind of pogoing from one side to the other as you swap from left to right. It's a beautiful kind of digs in and then flips the bike over. So the handling dynamic is really, really, really good. And it suits the character of the bike. Again, there's nothing aggressive. There's nothing too sharp steering. It's just a lovely, lovely bike to ride. Um, shortcomings, well, I mean, you know, if you want lots of power, it hasn't got it. If you want dramatics and excitement and theatrics, it hasn't really got that, but it has got a wonderful sense of presence. The clocks are good. I like the TFT dash. I'm a bit concerned that it's a bit overly blue. If you don't like blue, then you're going to be a bit disappointed with that. Uh, it's well equipped with the cruise control, with the engine modes, three engine modes. It's got road and rain and an off-road mode, which I think the off-road mode is kind of more like a sport mode, to be honest, because it disables ABS at the back so you can do the skids. Um, and I just love the vibe of the thing. I mean, it's one of those bikes that you look at and you think, could I live with this? Could I put this in my garage? And could I cope with it on a day-to-day -day basis? Would I look forward to riding it? The answer is a unanimous yes. There's nothing about this that I'd think, I'll take the car today or I'll take some other bike instead. You just want to ride it. In fact, I just want to ride it now. So let's look at the price. We have two basic models. We have the uh, dual colour model, which this one is, uh, I think it's Kalahari yellow or something, and then there's a, a red and white bike as well. Uh, those bikes are £11,100, uh, and they are different from the standard bike, which is the single colour, comes in blue and grey and red. Uh, that's £10,900, and it hasn't got the same, the, the premium model, if you like, has got this kind of like slightly Alcantara suede seat thing going on, whereas the standard bike hasn't got that. And the standard bike obviously hasn't got the sort of the dual colours on the fork shrouds. But all in all, that's kind of a competitive sort of price. Uh, I can't wait to ride this again. You can find out more. You can read the full review at www.bikesocial.co.uk. There was an awful lot of talking there.